Hi everyone, let's now look at a maximum price and the impact a maximum price can have on a market and how it can affect key stakeholders in a market. What is a maximum price? Well, again, it's a price control. Fixing the price done by the government, normally below the equilibrium, it could be above, but usually below the equilibrium, to basically support consumers. So if governments feel that the price for a good or service is too high, they can fix the maximum price below the equilibrium to ensure that consumers can actually afford it. Um, we call maximum prices price ceilings because the price can't go above. That is the ceiling price, the maximum price that can be charged. So let's have a look at a market. Let's take rented accommodation as our example. We have here the market for rented accommodation and this is a common market where maximum prices are actually imposed. So let's say governments think that P1 in the free market is too high and they decide, mm -mm, let's set a maximum price which lowers the price of the market to this level. Okay, so maybe that is the maximum price for rented accommodation. Call it P max, right? And that is the max price now. Let's analyze the effects of that in the market. Well, obviously demand is going to extend with a lower price, so consumers like it, that's the intention. So demand extends to Q2. Supply contracts, suppliers of rented accommodation do not like it. They don't like the fact that they are only getting a lower price now, a much lower price. So they contract their supply to Q3. Straight away you'll see in the market, demand is higher than supply. Shade in the triangle down below, that gives us a value of the excess demand. So I'll call that A and I'll call that B. So there we have, we have excess demand. And the problem is, because you've imposed a maximum price, there is no way for the free market to ration that excess demand. Usually in the free market, um, signals will be sent to producers that the price is too low. The incentive will then be to raise the price, contract your demand, ration the excess demand, and get to the um, market equilibrium, the market clearing price. However, with the maximum price, we're stuck with this excess demand, and that needs to be dealt with somehow. And if we don't deal with it, the only way to ration it is by queuing, or allowing a black market to exist, where uh, illegal traders can exploit the fact that there are consumers that are willing to pay a higher price, maybe lower than equilibrium price, but still a higher price than the maximum price, and they can start trading illegally, trying to ration the demand themselves. Anyway, let's look at the impact on stakeholders now. So the government has got a problem here. The government has actually imposed a price control that's caused an excess demand problem. That needs to be dealt with, and the way they can deal with it is by trying to increase supply to cut demand at point B, basically. If they can intervene and do that, then that will mean that Q2 units are actually produced and sold, and that will be an efficient outcome for all, instead of only Q3 units being produced and, uh, and actually sold. So they could do that. Now, how could they do that? Well, they could actually subsidize um, producers of rented accommodation, and that will reduce their costs of producing. It will incentivize them to increase the amount of output they produce, the amount of output that they, that they actually sell on to consumers. But the problem with that is that it's very expensive. So governments need to deal with excess demand. Okay, and one way to do it is by shifting supply to the right somehow or shifting supply back to point B. If they use a subsidy, then the supply will shift downwards to point B, and that could work. But the problem with doing that and imposing a subsidy is there is a huge opportunity cost. So if the government decides to subsidise, could that money have best been spent elsewhere in the economy? Maybe on education, maybe on healthcare, maybe on infrastructure development. Maybe there were better uses of that money instead of trying to solve the problem that the government has caused itself. Right? At the same time, uh, has that money been taken away from somewhere if subsidies have been placed? Right? And if the government does subsidise, will taxes have to rise in the future to fund the subsidy? There are major opportunity cost issues that the government has to deal with. The government also has to bear in mind the potential issues of black market. Now that can actually cause government failure if the government is not careful. And if we if I give you examples of where maximum prices have been used, yes, rent controls have been used, especially in uh, big cities like New York, in London, uh, rent controls have been seen in the form of maximum prices. The problems that have been caused by that are massive waiting lists, huge queues of people that are desperate to rent and get rented accommodation. But in somewhere like Venezuela, maximum prices have been used for food, 
your basic staple food items have all got maximum prices on them. And all that's meant is that consumers flock to buy all these goods and services at low price and they empty the shelves of supermarkets and all we see then are massive amounts of queuing, massive amounts of uh, rush buying and huge black markets, lots of food smuggling from across the border to try and manipulate the fact that there is an excess demand in there. So the potential for black markets to exist um, is not good for the government. It can lead to government failure. Uh, the government now needs to spend money to regulate and enforce policing to deal with potential black markets. Uh, and if they don't, there could well be a greater misallocation of resources, a bigger market failure. Um, so that's not good. So the government must also bear that in mind uh, and realise that black markets could well form as a result of a maximum price. Uh, producers don't like this for two reasons. They suffer from lower prices and they produce less, lower quantities. And the fact that they produce less may also feed through into jobs. Lower prices means lower revenues, lower profits, lower incomes. Not good for them. Lower quantities, again, implies that they have to cut back on jobs, and that can have a negative effect in the economy. Although, if the government does subsidise, if they manage to find a way to increase supply to get to Q2, then fair enough, that uh, argument may well be limited. Consumers like this. Yeah, so consumers like the fact that there are lower prices. Right? So consumers are happy about that, the fact that there are lower prices, but they're not going to be so happy if they can't actually buy whatever it is at this lower price because there isn't enough available. So the excess demand problem may well negate some of the benefits of lower prices. However, once again, if the government is successful in increasing supply, they may benefit from lower prices and still consume uh, at a given quantity. Um, uh, however, there is another way governments can deal with this. Instead of increasing supply, they might actually try and reduce demand. Uh, instead to get to an efficient level. But again, that kind of goes against the idea here. If you try and reduce demand, uh, what's the point? You're restricting consumption when you're trying to encourage it. So it's unlikely that's going to happen. But if governments are that stupid and they decide to reduce demand, consumers will not be happy with it. But on a very simple level, consumers do benefit from lower prices and it does encourage consumption of goods and services that maybe consumers before were not able to afford. And finally, we'll finish by saying that a maximum price also imposes a deadweight loss on society, just like a minimum price did. And the deadweight loss is this triangle here. But if you want to understand why this deadweight loss is caused, watch my video on why a maximum price causes a deadweight loss. I'll go through it in detail. But if you draw a minimum price diagram like this, analyze it like this, with the deadweight loss to society, you will score massive marks. So stick this on, you will score. If you want to understand it, watch the video on why deadweight loss is caused. Alright, that's it for Maximum Price. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.